Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Bird for Rec, Sequential Recommendation with Bidirectional Encoder Representation from Transformers. And this is from researchers from Alibaba Group, Beijing, China. Okay, so the paper proposes to use BERT for recommendations and that to very specific type of recommendations which are called as sequential recommendation. So let's learn about this a bit and then move forward. So sequential recommendation system is a bit different from traditional systems. They try to recommend an object to a particular user based on his search history where he was looking for similar kind of objects. So this is what is based on user item similarity. And the second one what you have is collaborative filtering where the idea is like if your friends like a certain thing, let's say, then the chances are very high like you'll also like this thing as well. So this gets recommended to you. So these have been the traditional ways how people have been modeling the recommendation systems. But in e-commerce space where you have a notion of setting a trail of purchases that you have done in the past. So there is an inherent temporal relation that kind of builds up over time. And this also plays a great role in terms of determining what should be the next thing that the system should recommend to the user. So such kind of analysis is kind of missing in the traditional systems and which is very much peculiar to what we call as sequential recommendation. Okay, so let's take an example. Let me just erase it out. So let's say this is you. Over the long weekend, you plan to kind of visit a certain place and explore that. So the first thing that you do is kind of book the flight tickets. So once the flight tickets are done, the next thing that you do is to book the hotels. So let's say that's also done. After this, you probably rent a car to kind of explore that place. What should come next over here? So let's say if this was the history that you have created over time, then what should be the next thing that the system should recommend or somebody should recommend for you to do? So one of the recommendations could be for you to go to the fuel station to get your car all pumped up. And the second recommendation could be all the tourist places that you could possibly explore. So if you notice over here, what's happening is since you have made some particular type of decisions in the past, the future ones are kind of dependent on those. So there is a temporal nature that's being followed. Similarly, in e-commerce space, it could be like you purchased a phone, you purchased its charger, you purchased a earphone, then what is the next thing that you're likely to purchase? Probably a phone cover or something. So that again is kind of derived from the earlier purchases that you have made. So I think you must have already gotten the idea to what sequential recommendation is. Now in these places, your traditional recommendation systems would not work because let's say if you have already purchased a flight ticket, then it will still keep recommending you the flight tickets as you go forward. So which is unlikely because you have already made the bookings. So why would you want to do that again? So that is where you get the hint. Okay, I need to model everything in sequence because this thing has already been done. So what should be the probable next action that the user might take instead of recommending him again the same thing which he has already done. Okay, so with that background, let's move forward and read the abstract. Modeling users dynamic preferences from their historical behavior is challenging and crucial for recommender systems. So previous methods have employed the sequential neural networks to encode users' historical interactions from left to right into the hidden representation for making recommendations. Okay, so yeah, this is just like how you train your LSTMs for predicting the next word that must follow, let's say, after seeing these three words. So similar thing happens over here. This is something that user has bought. This is something user has bought. This is something user has bought. So what is the next thing that user is supposed to buy? And ultimately, we want to maximize the likelihood of this sequence. Let's call this as X. Okay, so authors say like these models have their own limitations because these are unidirectional in nature and more oftenly they also assume a rigid order sequence in the buying history. So which means is that unlike sequential data that has a natural temporal order such as in text or time series data where it's still okay to consider this rigidly order of sequence but that's not a very practical assumption to make when you're trying to model a user behavior on internet because it might be possible let's say he was looking for mobile and then charger and then let's say because of some emergency, he had to buy medicines after this. Now, if I ask, what is the next thing that he's likely to buy? So in this case, if we have a unidirectional model, where at any instance, you just focus on the previous segments that you have purchased. So it's really difficult for this model to kind of come up with this thing because it was kind of electronic sometime in the past. And then it came to pharmacy. Whereas in the case, let's say of bidirectional models, if this was a sequence, then let's say if we see here bought medicines again, and then again, he has bought some medicines then the bidirectional model has a context of saying, okay, this is also likely to be a medicine. So to address this unidirectional limitation of existing models, the authors propose BERT for REC, where they employ BERT for learning these bidirectional kind of representations. Okay. And after doing experimentation with the benchmark dataset, they found the model to be outperforming existing state-of-the-art methods. Okay. So let's move forward and see the exact algorithm. 
So if we formalize this entire problem statement, then let this be the set of all the users that we have. Let V be the list of all the items that we have, let's say on the e-commerce website. Then the sequence S is essentially nothing but an interaction of the user and item over a certain time step. So this is for user U and V is nothing but the item and one T and N U are nothing but the time step. Like these many items you have interacted as of now. Now considering that we have this given history, now the idea of sequential recommendation is to aim to predict the next item that the user is likely to kind of interact with. So this entire thing can be modeled as this. Given the interaction sequence of user U with the item till a certain time step, we would ideally want to recommend him the next thing that he would be interested in. Okay. Okay, now they have written about the BERT model, its specifications like multi-head attention and all of that stuff. So that's fine. So now if we talk about the training of this model, so as you've already seen that they're trying to use BERT for capturing this bidirectional context. So essentially the way the word works is to kind of predict any certain word by considering all the words to its left, all the words to its right. And that is one of the objective which we call as mass language modeling, and which is also called as closed task. So in their case also, they can randomly sample some portion of all the items that you have in the input sequence. And they replace that with the special token mask, which again is in line with what the actual bird did. And then the idea is to predict the original IDs against those mask tokens at the output end. So if the input sequence is like this, we randomly mask let's say two interactions from here. And that is what we want to predict, which is V2 and V4 at the output end. And then corresponding to each of the mask token, we have the negative log likelihood, which is a loss, where this probability is nothing but the cross entropy loss. And we average this over all the masks that we have. So the way you format the data for mass language modeling comes with one additional advantage. So let's consider a case where we are supposed to just train a sequential model. So let's say if the sequence S is V1, V2 till VK. So you would essentially format your data as V1, then predicting V2. And if I have V1 and V2 as the context, then I want to predict V3. And similarly, if V1, V2, V3 was the context, then I want to predict V4. So these are all the Y values that I have and the size of the X keeps increasing. So in this case, for any sequence that has K number of nodes, we can maximum generate K minus one number of examples because we essentially start with V2 and end with VK. So that's why a minus one over here. But in case of mass language modeling, let's say if we choose our row to be two, which means we'll be randomly masking two words out of the all K words that we have. So the number of examples that we can generate in this case would be KC2, because here we are interested in choosing any two interactions out of all the K interactions that we have. So that way we have like a lot of examples that we generate out of one single sequence. So yeah, that's an extra advantage that we have. Okay. So if you see the train in the test scenario, things are pretty mismatched because during training, what you're doing is, let's say these are all the end sequences that you have, which are the interactions. You mask out some random words. I keep saying words, sorry for that. I am just in that NLP zone. Out of which you mask some random interactions and then you predict these masked IDs based on the other IDs that are available. So this is the training scenario. But what about testing? Ideally you would want, let's say if this is the sequence that we have, then we would like to know what is the next thing that user is likely to purchase based on this history if we have seen this. So the testing scenario looks like an auto regressive because you're just allowed to see interactions in one directions, unlike the training part where the model had the possibility of looking to its left and right. So for that, authors specifically produced the examples where the last item of the input sequence was just masked, which essentially mimics the testing scenario. So that way the model had a sense of what it is supposed to see in the testing phase as well. So yeah, this is the entire paper, I guess. Then they have the data sets and evaluations. Cool. It would have been interesting if the authors would have also tried the ExcelNet model because of the fact that the model is auto regressive by default, but because of the concept of permutation language model, on average, the word would have seen all the tokens that would have occurred to its left and right while it gets permuted. Because of the way the Excel net is designed, this looks like an exact use case for the sequential recommendation. Because here also we are trying to make sequential prediction which are autoregressive with a little mismatch during the training which is bidirectional. Rather in Excel net, you would always have your training as well as testing which is in autoregressive form. And the learning from the bidirectional context comes from the permutation logic. So that would be a pretty interesting experiment to do. Okay, so having said that, if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye.